Hello everyone, this is Joanna. Welcome to Team Joanna. These are going to be, uh, this is going to be your weekly pulse message starting uh, December 30th, I believe, is Monday. Uh, let's see how it goes. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas um, or anything else that you were celebrating. Also, before I move on with the messages, um, the 2020 videos are almost ready. The link is down below if you are wanting to, uh, to purchase it. Um, the monthly January um, messages might be a couple days late, so just FYI. So just bear with me until uh, they come up. Hopefully they won't be late, but they might be late. Um, let's see what's going on with this next upcoming week. So the first thing that I'm seeing, uh, okay, sorry, I was stopped. Uh, I am supposed to give somebody this message. Congratul <laughs> Congratulations in how you uh, dealt with your brother-in-law. So there's gotta be one person out there for you, uh, of, of, of you that has dealt with a brother-in-law differently somehow. You either put some peace between the two of you or you decided to approach uh, your brother-in-law from a diff with a different from a different perspective, and uh, because of that, you were able to come into some sort of amicable amicable place. I have no idea who this is for, but whoever you are, you're supposed to hear it. <laughs> okay. For the rest of you, um, I hope you had a good time during Christmas and you were able to get through it uh, unscathed. All right. The uh, image that I had when I was tuning in to the energy was one of uh, opening doors. So the image was actually being shown to me as a, a four of wands. And there's a specific, specific vision that I have with this image. And that is uh, a door opening. This door is in front of us. It is not here yet. There is some distance. Um, uh, before we reach whatever that door is. And for some of you, this door represents stability, uh, whether it's financial stability, whether it's uh, physical stability, whether it's um, love stability, what, the word stability comes up. And it is stability in terms of your foundation. In other words, how stable and how safe and secure you feel within, within you. And uh, the feeling that I get is that we are all approaching uh, um, a period where that inner stability, if you will, uh, 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 will be opened to us. And it's not that it was not opened to us before, per se. It's just that the division that we had within ourselves has prevented us mostly from reaching that space and it's a very much a vibrational space and um obviously inner security comes from from many things one of the things it comes from is from self-acceptance or accepting oneself and if we do not accept ourselves um just as we are with our quirks and you know, good and bad, the, 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 the good and the ugly, then we constantly live in a state of inner separation. And that inner separation does not give us stability and not having that stability does not make us feel safe. So we are working uh, very hard, looks like, and diligently towards uh, having less separation within ourselves about ourselves. And I'm talking about rejecting self-rejecting self and we all all humans do it at least to my knowledge to some extent at certain periods of their life and it is that um rejection of self that we are no longer willing to be a part of and we are moving into more of a unified whole feeling and the four of wands or the door represents that as destiny. It is a place of inner safety and inner security. And I also almost wanna say the word sanctuary. It feels like a sanctuary. What sanctuary? To me, sanctuary that, to me, sanctuary is a space and place where I feel whole, I feel special, I feel 
protected, I feel safe, I feel at home. All these words are coming uh, uh, to, to mind when I say the word sanctuary. And it's that feeling of inner sanctuary, if, we, if, if you will, that we are after. With having said that, let me move into the cards. What is our focus for the next week? Very interesting. The idea of intention comes up. So it is important for us to not only discover and be clear with what our intention is or be clear about our intention. It is also about putting forth effort and practices in order to reach that intention. And this intention can be whatever you want. Chances are when you break down whatever it is that you are intending to experience, it has a lot to do with inner safety and security or that inner, inner, inner sanctuary. So it is important to have a clear mind on the big picture you are trying to envision. In other words, if you are reaching for something that is outside of you, which you are, we all do, at least know what it represents within you. If you are reaching for a goal, let's say, that is to do with a career, then tune into what would that feel like when you have that career and let the feelings, the emotions that you have connected to the goal lead you there. So it's important to be connected to the frequency, which I feel we all know that. So intention is, it's not enough just to have an intention and just leave it there and go about our old business and doing the same old, same old. It is about having an intention and identifying what it is that is in our path that is, or has at least in the past, prevented us from reaching such uh, intention or from reaching such destination. And chances are you're going to come up with many things and all these things you're going to come up with are under the umbrella of limitations. In other words, the ultimate goal for any human is survival. That's just a brain thing. The body is designed to survive. So survival comes with safety and security. So those are the things that every single human needs and every single human looks for on some level under a certain label. So safety and security must come first in order for us to, you know, build our life towards what we call happiness. Therefore, whatever it is that you are after, whatever it is that you are searching, whatever intention you have in mind, know that it's primarily because you want to feel safe and secure. And if you do not feel safe and secure now, then chances are you are working towards building certain blocks that will allow you eventually to feel that. So that feeling is your destination per se. So know what your intention is. Be clear on what your intention is. This week, when things present themselves to you, or if things present themselves to you like opportunities, connect them to what your intention is and see if there is a match. As a matter of fact, look at your life and take a bit of an inventory and see what is on your list that is aligned with what your intention is and what are the things that are not. And then look at the things that are not aligned with your intention and ask yourself this question. Do I choose to continue to believe this is what I need or do I choose to believe something different? In other words, if there is something in your life that is preventing you from reaching that goal, whatever your intention is, and you are still in it or it is part, still part of your life, ask yourself the question, how does it serve me now? How does it serve me? 
and I've talked about this before, everything that we do serves us on a certain level. Some things are not logical because they're deeply, deeply, deeply rooted in our subconscious. But everything we do is for a reason. We have a reason for it. So everything that we do uh, gives us something. And sometimes we participate in things that seemingly don't give us anything, but when we open it up, if you will, and we go deeper into the layers and layers of understanding, we begin to see that whatever this thing is that we are trying to get rid of or the thing that's stopping us or preventing us from ultimate happiness is actually giving us something um, that we need. Perhaps that very thing or person is making you feel safe in some way. It's making you feel familiar. You know, the old patterns. Now, what is this about? What is this intention about? I thought this was interesting. The Golden Palace card to me represents, well, safety, security. See a strong structure connected to earth. So there's a, there, there's a inner, there's an inner sense of safety and security and stability here. This is what you are all, what we are all working towards. That's what the intention is. Or for many of you, that's what the intention is. And I always say in order for a big structure to be built, there must be a strong foundation to support it. Otherwise, the foundation is going to crack and whatever is built on top of it will also begin to tumble down. You get the picture, it's a tower, tower effect. So this is a time for us to redefine our goals in terms of what our intentions are. What are we here to do? Each and every person asks themselves that question and usually come up with some sort of an answer, which is often, I don't know. As I've said before, and I feel like I'm supposed to say it now, you are here simply to be you. And you are made up of frequency of love. It's not the romantic type of love. It's much more than that. So essentially, you are here to love. And that's a reminder. How you love how you let love in, how you show love, how you block yourself from love and all the other things that are connected to the idea of love, how you experience love, that is all up to you. That is all up to you. And we are all in a space, in time, where our ability to manifest is that much greater. Therefore, it is important to understand first, A, that we are our own creators, though most of us are not conscious creators, but we are our, creator, our creators. And to understand that with being a creator comes the ability to create. Therefore, since we are all creators, we all have the ability to create. And in order to create something, anything, we have to first start with an intention. If the intention is not clear, the creation process happens kind of all over the place. There is no structure. It's no different than being in the middle of an ocean on a boat and you're not choosing a destination. So you're just kind of wobbling around, you know, the water carries you wherever the wind carries you. So you're technically still in the boat and you are on water, but you, are, you have no destination. I don't know too many people who like to feel that way on a regular basis. It's not a very comfortable feeling. It's not a very comfortable feeling. It's like it doesn't have an anchor. It doesn't have, it's not grounded. It's not a good feeling. And not having an intention can often feel like that. So if you are feeling like you are floating with no direction, then ask yourself this question, what is my intention? What is your intention? What is your intention for the next month, for the next year, for the next five years? 
what is your intention for tomorrow? Get used to setting your intentions on a regular basis. And your intentions can change. Perfectly okay. But as long as you have an intention, you have something to work towards. It's like the universe pick, picks up the cues by your intention. In other words, the moment you intend on something, the universe conspires to align you with that intention. And I'm being asked to say that the intention has to be heartfelt. In other words, it has to have a feeling behind it. Why is that important? Um, I just heard because it's an economical way to uh, to to create. In other words, um, it's 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 a very potent way to create. I don't want to use the term we create faster because then I'm adding time thing into it. And as we know, time is something that we came up with in order to have structure, blah, 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 blah. But let's just say, yes, when your intention is heartfelt, it tends to speed things up, speed things up, okay? It's the difference between driving, uh, riding a bike and driving a really fast car and you're going the same direction. Both vehicles will get you there, but, you know, each vehicle will give you a different experience. So again, the choice is yours. Whichever vehicle you choose and pick, that's up to you. But at least pick a destination. So heartfelt intentions are really important. The idea of being candid with yourself mostly than with others is also an appropriate thing to think about during this time. I'm looking at the numbers here, it's two and five. Perhaps there are some choices that you are looking at making. Perhaps these choices need you to speak up about something. I hear the word affirm yourself, affirm yourself, affirm yourself. Perhaps you need to be outspoken about the things you're good at. And this is not you bragging. Well, it is a little bit. But if you are often the kind of person that doesn't say very much, then you're not sharing part of who you are. And if you're not sharing part of who you are, then people cannot know who you are. You become a person who is not able to let people in. That's interesting. And sharing your experiences brings people closer to you. It brings people together. So the candid message here for some of you is about being more outspoken about who you are, what you like, what your passions are. Just being a little bit more outspoken. People need to more, people want to know more about you if you let them. For some of you, it's speak up for yourself. So if you are that person or if you know someone who had a situation with a brother-in-law and you handled it differently or they handled it differently, then they were using their voice differently. Perhaps they spoke the truth. Perhaps you spoke your truth. And the way you spoke your truth was different. Perhaps you were very honest, you were very candid, but you were also very loving and very, can very kind. And perhaps that is what has changed. So that's the message that comes with being candid. I also want to say this. You're not responsible for anybody else or anybody else's reactions. However, to what you say. However, I personally believe that there is room for being candid and also being loving at the same time. And sometimes when we tell people how we feel, it may appear like we are being hurtful or it may be hurtful to them. But the way a message is spoken or the way a message is delivered 
can have many different corresponding experiences or feedback. So if you have something to say to somebody, make sure you don't say it with blame, whether blaming somebody else or blaming yourself. Speak out more from space of observation and use a lot of I versus use. It's a more effective way of com to communicate. Some of you will be calling the truths with somebody, whether it's because you will happen to be together or it's the end of the year and you're going to, you know, leave this year, the 2019 and start on a fresh note. Um, how do I want to say this? Be open about your feelings, but you don't have to divulge all the information. So this is really interesting. Sometimes holding back certain parts can go a long, long way. I don't know who this message is for. It seems to be very specific. It feels like I'm talking to somebody who's going to have a who's going to be talking with somebody else. If you have something to say, say what you mean, mean what you say. Do your best not to be purposely hurtful and you don't owe anyone an explanation. That's how I want to say it. You don't owe anyone an explanation. So sometimes saying less is actually saying more. Whoever you are, if you're meant to get this, and I'm looking at it, it's 222, wow. Uh, you, are, you, are, you will understand what I mean by that, okay? For some of you, it's about making choice or decision that may not be understood by others. That's okay. Some people will not be able to understand. Some people will understand later. Some won't. Always remember, what's your intention? If your intention is true to you, then decide what that means to you. What does it mean to you to be true to you? If your intention is to feel safe and secure within your own body, perhaps that intention means that you get to speak up a little bit. You get to stand up for yourself a little bit. Not from a space of blame, but you get to speak up. Perhaps you get to share your emotions. It's a very interesting week. I feel like, well, it makes sense. A few days ago, a couple of days ago, we had the um, eclipse because I feel like I just left something and I'm right about to enter another door, but I'm kind of sort of in between. That's really interesting. I'm in, yeah, I'm in between. I'm in a hallway somewhere. It will be interesting to, to, to know if any of you feel the same way. And what else can I say about um, this upcoming week? You are the product of your own imagination. Therefore, imagine well. I don't think it needs an explanation, but I can't help myself. You are what you believe. You are what you imagine yourself to be. Therefore, if you are what you imagine, imagine well. If you imagine that you are inferior, change your imagination, imagine otherwise. If you are imagining that you are less than, well, someone might say, well, it's a fact. How is it a fact? Because you're going to compare yourself to somebody else. You're never going to find somebody just like you. It's never going to happen because you're unique. It's like comparing to snowflakes. Makes no sense. So if you are someone who doesn't feel enough or feels you are less than and somehow you, you, you cling to it because somehow you have proof, no, you don't. You don't have any proof. You cannot prove you're less than because there is no one like you to prove it against. I'm trying to make a point here, a bigger point, okay? In other words, imagine a different version of you. 
a version of you that isn't afraid, a version of you that is not scared, which is the same thing, a version of you that is not afraid to speak up, a version of you that shines their light fully, that version of you, imagine that. Let that be your intention. Maybe your intention is to envision a different you, or to put it differently, maybe your intention is to envision the you that you really are underneath all the limitations. We are dropping density, and that means we are letting go of lower vibrating versions of beliefs. And in order to drop those beliefs, we first have to identify them, which means we also have to be honest about them. Perhaps this is what you need to be candid about with yourself. What are some of the truths that you are still holding on to for dear life? Yet those truths about you prevent you from being who you really are, which is embodied being that is made up of love. What truths do you hold to not make you see that? What truths do you hold to not make you see how perfect you are? And I don't mean as the human ideology of perfect, I mean beyond that. If you're listening to this channel, there's more to you than your body. You know that already. But it's worth reminding. And since we just had the eclipse and we are eclipsing things out, we are dropping density. And I believe eclipses can take for six months to a year. That's what I heard. I might be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. And in order to drop something, we first need to uh, recognize it see it. This is a time to see or recognize the truths, the patterns you have about yourself that no longer serve you. Make that your intention. Perhaps your intention this week is to examine your truths. Examine what your beliefs are, what your true core beliefs are. Not the ones you tell yourself, the ones true. What's the difference? Here's the difference. Um, let's say I'll use this example. Let's say you've been with partners before and you've been mistreated. Every single one of them. And just you can't seem to get the right guy, the right gal. And you tell me, uh, I believe I'm worth it. I believe I'm worth it. I believe I'm worth it. I would say this to you. You think it. You're not embodying it. Because if you embodied it, it you would be it. And therefore, you would not have those experiences. So that's your true belief. Your belief isn't that you believe that you are worth it. That's not your belief. That's what you want to believe. Your belief actually says, I'm not. And sometimes that's a painful truth. Why is it painful, I'm asking? I'm being, I'm being asked. Because some of you are going to say, why is it painful? Because we judge. We judge ourselves. How about this? How about you begin the process of discovering your truth without judgment? Simply consider it as a investigative story and you are looking for clues, which means you have to be very objective. You have to see things from outside. You have to see things from a bigger picture. If you are too close, you cannot see things and you will miss things along the way. Perhaps make that your intention, to uncover your deep truths and see if they still serve you. Some of them serve you, absolutely, and, and very well at that. Some don't. I will, um, I will share mine. And I feel most of you will identify with this. One of my truths still is that I do not believe I'm good enough. I, it's still there, it's not nearly as potent as it has been, but it's still there. Which is why I'm constantly working on being a better channel because my head does this a lot. It talks a lot and says, is this right? Is this right? Is this true? Is this true? It judges a lot. Am I safe? Am I safe saying this? So my intention is to embrace that aspect of me more and by embracing that aspect of me, I shift my relationship with it 
and that changes how things go forward or how things move forward. So you might want to do the same. And I made a point of saying this to you about me because I'm just like you. We're all different, but in many ways, we're all the same. We all have pain, we all have joy, we all have certain feelings, we all want to be loved, we, want to be, we all want to be safe. We all share that, every single human. It just all comes in different packages for different people. And we have different paths, but we all share feelings and emotions, desires. We all share that. So by hopefully me sharing mine with you, you will allow yourself to um, be open about it in terms of what still has you stuck a little bit. And just be okay with it. Remember, this is about acceptance. This is no longer about living in the rejection mode. We are moving into much more of a unified whole, which means no more separation or much less separation. If there are separate aspects of you all over the place because you're not owning those aspects because you don't, for whatever reason, then you're not a unified whole. And therefore you will live your life from that separation perspective. And there is not, there is some peace there, but not enough to sustain. You cannot have peace in your heart when you're constantly at war with yourself. Just think of it that way. Just think of it that way. Okay? So, with that said, I think that's it for the next week. I didn't even realize it was this long. I hope this was helpful. I love to read your comments. So if you would like to comment, go right ahead. Um, again, if you would like a private session with me at any point, that information is down below. The six month videos will be posted very soon. Uh, that link will be down below and um, I will send an email to my email subscribers first. So if you're not on a subscribers list, just uh, subscribe and you will get a notification as soon as they're uploaded. And um, January message is coming soon, hopefully not late. If late then not more than two days and with that said um i hope you have a wonderful week and i look forward to seeing you soon take care bye